Hi, this is Dale with Behind the Bench. This afternoon we heard from Dr. Jiang Zhu from Scripps Research Institute, and he talked about antibody repertoire sequencing on the PGM. Dr. Zhu, that was a really interesting talk today. Can you give a sort of a high-level summary? Sure, I think the most important finding in um, our research um, in the antibody repertoire analysis is that, um, for example, the um, next generation sequencing platform is really critical to this application. And uh, in the past, we have been using uh, the 454 power sequencing platform. Uh, now we uh, switch to um, the Untorn PGM platform, uh, which is um, superior to uh, the platform we have used uh, in several different ways. Uh, for example, uh, PGM can give um, much higher throughput than 454. Yeah, although for a replacement, the standard read length of 400 base pairs is not long enough, right, on the PGM? Correct. Uh, so we tweaked the machine a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, um, we first did about a 450 BP sequencing uh, to capture the V, D, and G, um, the three uh, gene segments. And then we realized that since by using 400 BP reagents and the chemistry, we can reach 450 BP, um, why not try longer, right? We're mm -hmm. scientists, we always explore new opportunities and uh, new possibilities. So what we did is uh, also based on um, the needs in the field that um, we want to capture the antibody repertoire in an unbiased manner. Uh, so we developed a uh, so-called five primary space, uh, PCR-based method. Uh, the only problem with uh, using five primary PCR is that the PCR products will be around 600 BP. So that's extremely long, and as I mentioned in my talk, uh, has posed a significant challenge uh, to the current um, NGS platform. Mm -hmm. And we were able uh, to sequence the entire uh, five primary uh, PCR products on the PGM platform. Going out to 650 base pairs? Yes. Wow. That's and quite incredible, right? Well, a little hard to believe, but you have the work and you'll be publishing it soon, yeah? Yeah, hopefully we'll be publishing it soon. And you mentioned that depth really matters in this case because the prior work that you used to do on the 454 platform was just a fraction, is that correct? Uh, yes. So, for example, on 454 platform, uh, you can get um, typically around um, a quarter million or a half million reads uh, for one patient sample. On PGM platform, uh, when you use the largest chip, um, the 318 chip, sure. you can get about uh, six, seven, or sometimes eight million reads, uh, which is uh, about ten times um, deeper than the um, output from 454. And also, um, well, because you now you have a much deeper um, uh, uh, throughput, now you can get, um, you can capture some rare clones, antibody clones that uh, otherwise would be missed um, on the 454 platform. And we have done a side-by-side -side comparison of the 454 platform and um, the PGM platform on the same donor sample, and we clearly see that effect. Yeah. And then you also had some really interesting work that was around the those sort of rare variants or rare rare particular clones. What does that say about the immunology of that particular sample? Being able to sequence deeper, you're able to find those rare. Uh, yes. So right now in antibody research, uh, the most uh, powerful experimental method is so-called uh, single cell um, sorting. Um, based on uh, flow cytometry. Um, it's a great technology, and it's developed very recently. The only um, drawback with this technology is that um, you can only get a few cells uh, out of a million or a few million cells um, by sorting. Uh, but with deep sequencing, um, using a PGM platform, you can capture several million uh, sequences just in one run and you can get a much deeper view of the immune system, much more complete view of the immune system. And um, when you use, let's say, uh, you have a few antibody sequences identified um, by single cell sorting, uh, now you can do deep sequencing on the same donor sample using PGM platform. 
And then when you use um, the experimental sequences as a reference to look at the whole repertoire, now you can find many, many more. It can be thousand more um, variants um, in the antibody repertoire uh, yes. revealed by uh, deep yes. sequencing. And then you had one unusual result, which gave, made you make the comment, what is normal may not be normal. Yeah. And what did you mean by that? There was one normal sample that you thought was normal, but had what a, a re it did have a response to something. Or a particular, it was a particular recombination that it expanded that I was think not expected. Our perception of what's normal, what's not normal, is sort of uh, uh, defined by the technologies we use, and but it's also limited by the technology. So in the past, because we have very limited ways to look at transient or dynamic antibody response, so clearly that uh, limit our um, view of the immune system. Now it's different. Um, you can get blood samples at uh, certain time points, and now you can get unbiased view uh, of the entire uh, immune repertoire, being T, T cell repertoire or B cell repertoire using um, next generation sequencing. And then you, it's pretty much like taking a snapshot of the immune system at that particular moment. Um, when you have a series of time points uh, with blood samples, uh, taken from each time point, you're like watching uh, a movie, a dynamic, um, you know, uh, events happening right behind, uh, in front of you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Chu. Very interesting work. If you're interested in learning more about the Genetic Solutions Tour, follow us on lifetechnologies.com forward slash behind the bench. If you have any questions for Dr. Chu, please feel free to leave them in the comments.